All right, diving into the first article to discover this week, headline top seven Memorial Day dishes and their historical significance. Memorial Day is the nation's foremost annual day to mourn and honor our deceased servicemen and women. Originally known as Decoration Day because we would decorate the graves, it was formalized by a Memorial Day order in 1868. Yeah, so to start off today with a little, you know, happy Memorial Day, happy Memorial Day weekend, um, I feel like I want to start on just like a more maybe somber, serious note about what Memorial Day is before we get into kind of the fun of our article. And I actually have a quote that I found that I really love that I wanted to start us off with. And it is, heroes and never die. They live on in the hearts and the minds of those who would follow in their footsteps. I thought that was just a beautiful reminder for obviously all of our fallen soldiers and just this, you know, this entire holiday dates back to for the United States back to the Civil War. And, you know, even before that, there's records back to like BC. Uh, And so just like thinking about the heroes for our country today, every day, but especially this weekend. Yeah. No, thank you for that quote. It was really beautiful. And I am glad you decided to start this out uh, on a more serious note, I guess, because I think that was one of my issues actually with this article. You know, we chose this intentionally because we wanted to do something fun, which is what our you know podcast is, Entertainment Meets Information, every Thursday when it comes to food and agriculture. And we thought, well, obviously, Memorial Day. Let's do something with Memorial Day dishes. But as I was reading this article, I was like, this is all about grilling you know, and it's like you lose the meaning of the holiday. And I think I just kept reading and being like, I don't care about corn on the cob, you know, like I care about our soldiers we're supposed to be honoring. So I love that we started that out on that note. Thank I you. know I even felt bad going into it saying like happy Memorial Day. Like I never know how to address this day because it is actually like a really heavy day. It is not Labor Day. It is not even Veterans Day. It is for fallen soldiers. So it just is a very serious note. But at the same time, like you think about what today is like this is coming out on Thursday for all of our schools. It's the first day of summer here in New Mexico, probably lots of places across the country. It's the official, you know, kickoff to summer. And so it has like these two very contradicting like themes of it. And so I had a, like a hard time of figuring out how to get us started. So I thought a quote was good. I actually have two other quotes. Maybe we'll share them to stories over the weekend because I, I found so many incredible quotes. I have like goosebumps right now, like looking through my notes for this um, that are just really powerful and remind you of what this weekend and what the day on Monday is really about. But we are a fun podcast, so I do want us to have some fun with this article as well. Oh, we'll have fun. We'll definitely have fun. We always have fun. But there is a couple more things I guess I want to note because I actually ended up, oddly enough, I feel like I end up on Reddit threads a lot for our uh, topics on the podcast, but I never thought I would end up on a Memorial Day Reddit thread, but I did. And it was interesting because there was actually a couple posts and threads talking about what you did, which is, this is obviously a very serious holiday. There are families, you know, that are mourning the loss of their children, brothers, sisters, you know, wives, husbands, spouses. And on the same note, it's kind of, there was a specific post that I was reading that was talking about, you can approach the day and the holiday, somber, melancholy, astute, or you can also take the approach which some people do like to celebrate the lives and honor the lives. And so on that, that made me kind of pause and think too about it is okay to still, as this mentioned, you know, enter summer with a uplifting, you know, beat and positive attitude. Like it is okay to, I guess, maybe approach this holiday, not black and white. Like it doesn't have to be totally serious. I think you can find the balance between honoring while still celebrating the people you are with and having good food, which is kind of what this article was about. Yeah, I also had no idea about the history of Memorial Day, which I am disappointed in myself. But here I am now at 35 doing some research about it that, as you said, it's originally called Decoration Day because they would actually go out and decorate the grave. So that's what it was called. And it wasn't until much later that it was actually called Memorial Day. And then I did not know this, but, and again, I feel so stupid, but Bill Clinton actually signed the National Moment of Remembrance Act in 2000, which asked Americans to pause and observe a national moment of remembrance, clearly struggling with that word. (laughs) Nope. (laughs) I'm moving on from it. If you guys have been following us all the way since back from Elevate Ag Days, I have a problem with the word memorable and remembrance and I combined them <laughs> rememorable rememorable uh anyway okay sorry but anyway at 3 p.m local time we're all supposed to pause and stop 
and take a moment. And I am definitely going to add that into like wherever we're at. We're usually home on the actual Monday of uh, Memorial Day. So I'll I just want us to stop and like do that this year and actually honor that moment. Yeah, there is, as you said, modern Memorial Day, like specific timelines on top of the 3 p.m. Remembrance. You're also supposed to you're (laughs) you're also supposed to fly your flags at half staff, but only until noon. And then at that point, that is when you swiftly raise them to the top of the pole, which is something I didn't realize when you are raising a flag, you're supposed to do it very, very quickly. And when you are lowering a flag, you're supposed to do it very slowly. And I did not realize that there was even, I I knew there was a lot of intent with how you handle a flag and and fly a flag. I know you have to like shine a flag on it at night and stuff, but I didn't realize, I guess that specific detail of when you are actually lowering and raising, there was even guidelines around that. So I learned that too. Did you have to raise flags and lower flags at school? Cause that was like every, you would get like assigned a week and every day for a week, you'd have to do it. And almost always like a veteran would, one of the veteran teachers would teach us about the flag and all the duties and everything. Oh, that is so cool. It was cool. Actually, I'm just remembering this now. I feel like I should do this with the girls with like homeschooling because they wouldn't obviously have it otherwise. But it was actually a cool thing to have be a part of your school that you took a ton of responsibility and you actually had to learn about the flag. I know now that we have our office set up on the ranch, we're going to put like, you know, a cohort cattle sign out in front of it and kind of landscape it. And I want to get a flagpole for there. And so maybe I'll do the same thing. Like when we get that, I could teach the boys about it. I have one other thing that, you you know, you just mentioned that you're going to make this kind of a a thing. I have one uh, out of, I guess, learning for this article, I discovered something that I'm going to implement a yearly memorial thing. And I want to dive into that and then we can get into the fun food. But I was like uh, thinking about all the flowers, right? I mean, we're an ag podcast. And so I was thinking about all the flowers for Memorial Day. And I was maybe going to bring some flower stats. But I ended up stumbling upon what is called the Memorial Day Flower Foundation. And essentially, it was started in 2011 by just a person who said they had five family members buried in Arlington Cemetery. And that year in 2011, they wanted to try and hand out 10,000 flowers to the different graves. And it has since grown to over hundreds and hundreds of thousands of flowers. And so if you want, you can go to the Memorial Day Flower Foundation website and you can put in a donation, which helps buy flowers for the graves. And I was like, I think I'm going to start doing that every year on Memorial Day, like donating some money for the flowers to be bought. So I thought I'd share that in case any discos want to maybe look into that for themselves. I love that. We should make a disco donation a discover ag donation to them yeah discover ag all our listeners okay getting into the food because let's be honest we're a food news podcast i'm ready for it and to be honest Mm -hmm. i am so ready for summer foods like i am ready for a change in my routine of foods and so i actually liked this article that i was like okay what can i like kick back up again like last night i pulled open my freezer and there was soup and i was like I just can't. It's 96 degrees outside at 730. Like I'm not making soup. And so it was like, what are we doing? You know, like, what are we what are we bringing back in? And we planted our garden this weekend. And I am really ready for watermelon. And watermelon did not make this list. And I was kind of disappointed, surprised, I guess. So that's so funny because the list was this. It listed the most seven popular dishes. It was hamburgers, hot dogs, Barbecue ribs, grilled chicken, corn on the cob, coleslaw, and potato All salad. All total, like, makes sense. But then there was lots that I thought were missing. Well, but on the same note, I was like, I don't know if you said coleslaw. If I'm like, Memorial no. Day. Like, I don't know if that's like what I think of. So I was kind of like, did you just pick summer foods essentially for this list? I feel like that's kind of what they did. I agree. Well, I was like, where's steak? Like, where's grilled steak? Because on other articles, I saw like a really high percentage of steaks. Actually, a fun fact, more beef is eaten on Memorial Day than any other day out of the year, which I found out was, I just thought that was really fascinating. Like, I'm surprised it wasn't 4th of July, that Memorial Day would beat 4th of July. I would put my money down on 4th of July, hands down. Do you know what state eats the most beef? Natalie? Nebraska. (laughs) Montana. Oh. (laughs) And the least beef eating state is Maine, which I was like, yeah, well, if I was picking between beef and lobster, like I might choose lobster too. Yeah. (laughs) Valid point. Valid point. But no, in my mind, I was like, where is watermelon? Coleslaw? Not so much. I I have to... uh, I have to admit, I, but it did make me, I was like, oh, I am totally buying a watermelon for this weekend and getting it ready to go. It's so funny you say that because you're like, I am ready for summer foods. And I'm like, listen, we have been eating all of these foods on the list all year round. Yeah, that's like, <laughs> uh, We've already bought two watermelons. <laughs> Like, why have you not bought watermelons already? And I'll never forget the time you were up visiting. Well, I don't even know what month it was. And we were going to have 
burgers or steaks. And you were like, can you grill? And we were like, Tara, we grill all year long. <laughs> like you were blown away that just because we have cold weather, we don't grill. So like we're eating hamburgers and hot dogs and barbecue ribs and grilled chicken like all year long. Listen, I've never met a hot dog I didn't like, if I'm being honest. Like I am a hot dog stan and I know that you are too. My kids are too. Annalise always says she loves hot dog on a stick. She cannot figure out that's a corn dog, <laughs> but it's fine. I don't think it's a hot dog on a stick. But I truly do love hot dogs and I eat them all year round. So I don't know why I say that either, but I think it's more socially acceptable now to be like, we're having hamburgers three nights a week and like tossing some hot dogs. No, you know, I will mow down on a hot dog or a corn dog any day of the year anywhere. I mean, I always joke that I'm a food snob until it comes to a hot dog or a corn dog and I will eat like the gas station on the corner of the smallest town in the world with question marks behind it. I will consume that hot dog. Like I love a hot dog. Well, you are not the only one and I am not the only one because we eat over 800 hot dogs a second on Memorial Day. Americans are disgusting. <laughs> <That's so gross. laughs> I know. Oh my gosh. Makes me think of like a hot dog eating contest. Have you ever seen a real, have you ever been at a, like a hot dog eating contest or any type of food eating no, contest? I feel like that's something else I might excel at. <laughs> <laughs> I have so few Maybe talents. Maybe we should have a the next time we're together, we should we could have a hot dog eating contest. We should. Uh, Guinevere still discusses the time that we had a cartwheel competition, you and I. Cartwheel contest. <laughs> 35 years old. I think we both we like threw our hips out. But maybe a hot dog competition would be more up our alley. Okay, I think the last thing I have to say about this article is it made me ready to fire up the grill, which we have not actually done in forever. Daniel has become air fryer obsessed. He has not turned on the grill not one time <laughs> since the air fryer entered our house. But last night I was like, that's it. It's time. Turn on the grill. And he was like, why would I turn on the hot grill when I could just air fry my steak? And I was like, because it's summer. You have to grill. And that is because I said so. Because happy wife, happy life. Mama wants a hot dog. <laughs> a grilled <laughs> hot dog, not an air fried hot dog. one. Yeah. Yeah. But 44% uh, of Americans say that they plan on using their grill this weekend. So it is time for grilling. And actually, we have our Father's Day newsletter gift guide coming out next week. And I put a couple things for grilling, some things that Daniel really loves for his Weber and his big green egg. So if you are also firing up your grill this weekend, make sure you're signed up for, you know, Club Discover because there is going to be some good recommendations for the men in your life on that list. 